Oh, what happened here? Wow, what is... Generous. Kappa is teacher's pet. Kappa is teacher's pet. Wow, congratulations, Kappa. That's incredible. Good job. Okay. All right. Let's get started, folks. Um, we've got a fun week. Um, students, uh, pay attention. This week is absolutely, uh, it's either going to be a complete disaster for you or it's going to be eye opening. Um, I don't know if every algebra class does this, okay, to be honest. But um, what we're going to do is, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through the different orders of, L of groups up until 60 and uh, show you that um, you can always find a normal subgroup. Um, or uh, a non-trivial normal subgroup, unless it's Z mod PZ, then uh, you can't. Okay, so, um, and that'll explain why 60 is somehow the first place where in the periodic table of simple groups, which amazingly has been completely understood uh, in the l later half of the last century, um, why A5 is like the first entry, first interesting entry. Okay. I remember when I first took this took al abstract algebra, um, uh, my professor, Professor Serganova, Vera Serganova at uh, uh, UC Berkeley, she did this. She did something like this, and she showed that A5 was the only simple group of order 60, and it act it was a formative experience because. She busted out all the tricks and used them beautifully. So um, I'm going to do the same thing because it's a, it shows the, how to crank, pull the levers in different clever ways. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you is a trick. We've actually already used this trick once, um, but I'm going to give it a name. It's called uh, the class equation. And students, if you want to read something that's in line with what we're doing, go ahead and start reading chapter 24. Um, um, so chapter 24, you should think of as developing a, a massive trick. All right. So um, class equation, that's the first thing I'll talk about. Um, second thing is the definition. I'll talk about the concept of a nor the normalizer of a subgroup. And then um, three, we'll start the case analysis up to 60. All right, we'll start with 12, 18, and 24. Well, I'll, those are the first three that are on the chopping board. Okay. Um, those are the first three that we don't, not, that obviously don't fall. All right, so number one, class equation. The conjugacy class equation. Okay, the first thing you want to know about this is that it is an obvious equation at this point for us. All right, so, um, but I'm going to write it out. Um, um, so here's how it looks. Uh, G is a finite group. Otherwise, the things on both sides won't even make any sense. They'll just be infinity. Is a finite group. All right, then um, the size of G is uh, the size of the center, which of course is a normal subgroup, right? As a center plus um, uh, size, the sum of sizes of um, other conjugacy classes, sizes of conjugacy classes, which are not singletons. All right. So the size of G is the size of the centralizer. I mean, size of the center plus the size of all the non-trivial conjugacy classes. 
A conjugacy class is an orbit under the conjugation action. Recall that conjugacy class means orbit under um, conjugation action of G on G. All right, so where does a class equation come, come from? This, this class equation equals um, the size of the set on which a group is acting equals um, the sum of the sizes of orbits. And how you read this is the, cent the center of the group is precisely those elements whose orbit is a singleton. After all, what does it mean for the, for the orbit to be a single element? It means the stabilizer is the whole group. But the stabilizer being the whole group means G times that element times G inverse is only that element again for everything in the group. But that means that A commutes with everything. Okay, so this class equation is obvious. Singleton orbits, that's, those are all the elements of the center. And then you have all the other orbits that are bigger than one, size one. Okay, it's a simple equation and it can be used as a trick. This, is, this represents a trick. All right, so the second thing I wanna talk to you about is a definition, a definition. All right, so um, suppose it's very general. Suppose it doesn't have to be finite group, nothing. Suppose H in G is a subgroup of a group. Okay. Um, then the normalizer of that subgroup the normalizer of H, and sometimes they specify the normalizer of H in G. They specify the ambient group sometimes in the notation, but we, I won't, I'll suppress that, okay? The normalizer of H is the subgroup which is defined as follows. It is the set of elements in the group, in the ambient group, such that G H G inverse is H. It's the set of elements which under conjugation keep H preserved within itself. Okay, this forms a subgroup. Why? Why is this a subgroup? Well, you can check it just by if G1 and G2 conjugate H within itself, then so does G1 times G2, etc. You can do that. Or you can just realize that the normalizer the normalizer is simply the stabilizer. Stabilizers are subgroups of the element the element called H in the set of all subgroups of G. This is a set on which G acts by conjugation. So G acts on the collection of all of its subgroups by conjugating. If you take this subgroup called H, it's one element, it's one dot 
in this set X of all subgroups. The normalizer of H is just the stabilizer of that dot, of that element in the group action. Group actions are ubiquitous, folks. It uh, cleans up so much, just the, the language just cleans up so much of math. It doesn't, more things just are instances of a group acting in a particular way on some set. Okay, so that's, that's a uh, group that's born from a, any subgroup. Also observe that uh, H is automatically a normal subgroup of the normalizer of H. This is uh, obvious. But it's also kind of the point of the normalizer. It's the normalizer is a way of taking your subgroup, which may not be normal. Most of the time, a random subgroup isn't normal, isn't distinguished. French word is way better, distinguished. It is just some random subgroup. However, you can put it in a nice home called the normalizer in which that subgroup is now a normal subgroup of that home. And the normalizer is kind of the biggest home for a subgroup where that the subgroup becomes it is normal. Okay, it's like the biggest shell in which a given subgroup is a normal distinguished subgroup. Distinguished home for a subgroup. All right. Obviously, uh, another thing to observe. Um, H is normal in G if and only if the normalizer of H is all of G. So big, nor so just the normalizer group is some kind of measure of how normal your given subgroup is. The measurement is look at the index of the normalizer in the group. If it's a big index, you had a very non-normal subgroup H. If it's small index, pretty normal. Okay. It's just vague, but it's just a new subgroup that comes up when you um, have what have you when you have an arbitrary group subgroup. Um, that's okay. All right, so I gotta continue now to the fun part. Fun part now begins. So I, I did the two boring parts. They're not that boring actually. Let's start with uh, num let's start with the road to sixty now. All right, okay. So let's let's play this game. Let's start the game. Okay. So the goal is um, if G is less than sixty, then. Um, G is, um, G is not simple, and G is either not simple, or it's uh, Z mod PZ, or prime. All right, never gonna find an interesting simple group under 60. Okay, oh, th thank you, modern. So let's do this. So, so the game is always try to find a normal, somehow get to a normal subgroup. That's the game, name of the game. Okay, so we actually can knock down, can knock down tons of numbers. For example, we've already learned that uh, numbers of the form two times a prime. Oh, also prime numbers. We're not interested in those. Those are just Z mod PZ, fine. But two times a prime, these are just the dihedral group or Z mod 2PZ. And in both of these, you can find normal subgroups. Rotations. Or here, just there's actually two normal subgroups you can find in here. For example, you can find a copy of Z mod 2Z in here. And it's an abelian group. So once you find a, any non-trivial non-trivial subgroup, it's automatically normal. Okay, so two Ps are gone. 
Um, numbers of the form uh, p squared. Powers of p, actually. Powers of a prime. Are done. Because uh, we proved that a group of... Uh, a p group always has a non-trivial center. And this comes from the class equation. Okay, all right. That is a group with no normal subgroups. That is a good joke. That's a good joke right there. Good job. Good job. That's funny. <laughs> okay, so powers of primes are, are gone. All right. So um, I'll, I'll show you another one that's gone, students. You know this one. Um, here's another one that's gone. Um, P times Q. These are all gone. Because of RDL and Sloth going and making a great list of tricks. Yeah, um, because um, if uh, P is bigger than Q, then uh, there is always a normal subgroup. of size p. So these kinds of uh, numbers are all gone. So like 15 is gone, etc. Okay, so um, so that's that's one. P and Q are both primes. In fact, RDL shows a better statement. RDL um, writes it even better, which is um, if P divides the size of a group and P squared is bigger than the size of the group then G has a normal subgroup of size P alright so class I know you, you you understand this because by Cauchy's theorem or converse trick there is an element of size p, so there is one cyclic subgroup of size p, but then its conjugate, any conjugate of it, is another cyclic subgroup, subgroup of size p, so they cannot intersect, interestingly, and so you'd get hk trick giving p squared elements if the conjugate was a, was a distinct, distinct subgroup. p squared is bigger than g, so that's, that's impossible. All right, so that's the um, HK plus um, two groups of size P can't intersect, interestingly. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> so that's the... Um, um, so th this, this deals with a lot of cases. And so what I'm saying now is the first interesting case... is 12. All right, so let's pretend G is, a, G is a group with 12 elements. Okay. Let's see what the class equation, t t what the class equation says. It says 12 equals the size of the center plus other conjugacy classes. Okay? Other meaning big, bigger. Big means bigger than one. Yeah, okay. Awesome. Okay, in this game, we, c we should always pretend that the center is trivial. We should always pretend. In our game, we can always pretend that the center is trivial. Because the center is a normal subgroup. And 
If it's not trivial, we're done. So we can always pretend that this is a 1. Now what's in this stuff? Look at the stuff. The stuff is a sum of orbits, orbit sizes. And the size of an orbit divides the size of a group by orbit stabilizer. So these are all um, numbers dividing 12. Okay, now 12 has lots of factors. It's very rich in factors. So um, think about it. Uh, it's a bunch of numbers that um, are um, bigger than one and dividing. So right now it looks like it can be two, three, four, six. It's something like that. Can't be twelve. Okay, but okay. Um, however, twelve has to add up to something like this. Okay, so there are ten thousand ways to proceed here. Okay, there's not just one way to go. But what I want to emphasize is we know another thing. We can assume another thing. We can assume that no orbit has size 2 or 3. Because if it did, then we would then we would get a homomorphism we would get a map from g homomorphism to the permutations of that orbit now that orbit if it had two or three elements this would be either s2 or s3 and we would get a non-trivial homomorphism What is this homomorphism? It's just conjugation. See what it does to the elements in the orbit. It permutes them. And it permutes them non-trivially because the or the action is transitive on that orbit. Okay? So you, you produce such a homomorphism. But this homomorphism has to have a non-trivial kernel. Because the size of S2 or S3 is 2 or 6. But the group has 12 elements. Bigger. So there's got to be kernel. Okay? So done. That means you can't have any orbits of size 2 or 3. In the class equation. In any action. If we're trying to say that... If we're trying to see whether 12 is a contender at all for a simple group. Okay, so now we go back to the class equation. Orbits. So we can pretend. In the class equation, 1 is orbits, 1 plus orbits of size bigger than 3. But the sizes have to divide 12, so it's like 4, 6, But that's no good, because the left-hand side is even, and then the right-hand side would be odd. So 12 is done. Okay, every group of order 12 has to have some uh, normal subgroup in it. Good. So, um, okay. So that's the, that's how you can get, that's one way of getting rid of 12. Okay. Um, there's actually another way. I don't know if I should show you. Uh, do you all want to see another way of getting rid of 12 or do you want to move to 18? Which ones do you want? Let me see what, uh, let me see if there's any, um, um, what the students want. Do you want to see 12 again? 
or just more tricks or 18 18 okay another way two two other ways so far 118 oh you want to see getting rid of a 12 year old that's probably not um, legal I mean uh, but yeah I think getting rid of any human is probably not allowed but uh, regardless of the age. last time I checked but um, yeah okay so it looks like it's uh, two to one okay I'll do I'll do another way I'll do another way I'll do another way okay um, so we have an, we have a group of size 12 well there is an element of order three Let me just write it as um, you got it. We, we have a cyclic subgroup of order three. Okay. All right. Consider the action of left translation, which I'll denote by lambda through this whole game. Permutations on the set of left cosets. Oh, okay. New follower. Hello, uh, Kala. Good. Okay, good. All right. So, um, we have uh, left, trans left translation. It's a left multiplication action on the set of cosets of this thing. How many cosets are there? There are four because 12 divided by 3 is 4. So this permutation group is isomorphic to S4. In other words, we get a homomorphism from G to S4. So two cases. Um, lambda is injective. But I think in your homework or something similar to your homework, you showed that uh, the only index two subgroup of S4 or SN is AN. AN is the only index two subgroup. So if lambda is injective, then lambda of g being index 2 doesn't matter. Okay, lambda of g is index 2. Okay, whatever. So then lambda of g being index 2 must be a4. And a4 is not simple. So lambda is isomorphic to a4 in this case, and it's not a4 is not simple. Okay, or um, second case, lambda is not injective. Now lambda can never be left translation can never be the trivial homomorphism, because left translation acts transitively. On the set of left cosets. Every left coset is obtained by taking the trivial coset and hitting it with multiplication by num group elements on the left. That's what a left coset is. So the action can never be the trivial action. So lamb if lambda is not injective, then lambda map lambda is, goes from G to some group, surjects onto some group, some non-trivial group. Of size less than 12. Then you look at the kernel. Kernel is a normal, is a non trivial normal subgroup. All right, so there, that's, that's 12. That's 12 done another way. Okay, 18. Let's move to 18, folks. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, no, no. It, it, you have to, you have to study. You can't just nod. You have to study these tricks your, by yourself. Okay, good. Um, 18. Let's do 18. Let's try 18. Um, with, um, let's see, let's see what the class group, tell, the class equation gives us. All right. So we have a group of size 18. Okay, so class equation. Class equation will say that um, 18 equals, we can assume 1, 
can assume. Plus bigger orbits. Okay, good. I'll just write it like that. Now, what can bigger classes be? So 18 is like 3 times 3 times 2. Okay, 3 squared times 2. So the bigger classes can be size 2. They have to divide 18. 2, 3, 6, 9, whatever, right? Okay, can't be 3. We can assume no 3s or 2s. Again, homomorphism trick. I'm going to snug. 12 trick. Same reason these orbits can't. Otherwise, we'd be done. Okay? So, no threes or twos there. But then, if it's, if it's any number bigger than three or two, it's like, it's either, so it's either, you, we can have uh, six or nine, and that's it. Six or nine. Six or nine. That's it. Sixes and nines some number of them, add them up, plus a 1 equals 18. No shot. Because uh, um, divisibility by 3. Okay, so 18 is done. 18 is done. Okay, now I'm going to do something that looks like it's a terrible method, but I, but I want to show you the way um, my professor showed me some awesome tricks, okay? So I'm going to do 18 again. Let's do 18 again. All right, so we have a group of size 18. Okay. Well, uh, 3 divides 18, so there is there is an element of order 3. So let's do that. Let's take that cyclic subgroup that we know is there. There's one. At least one. Notice your p squared tr trick doesn't work here. Anyway, let's, let's take this. And now there are two cases. There are two cases. If, if the normalizer of this subgroup is bigger than that subgroup, that's one case. All right? And then there is um, otherwise. There's going to be a tree. Okay, what if the normalizer is a strictly bigger group than the subgroup? Well, look, I mean, we have 18 to work with. Everything needs to divide 18. This thing is size 3. So the normalizer would have to have size 6 or 9. But then, you know it, students, consider the left action of G on the permutation, on the set of, on the set of cosets of the normalizer. This thing is, this thing is either S2 or S3. Now, that's got to have a non-trivial uh, kernel. So done. So this case is, so this case is done. All right, so if you go that way, you'll end up with uh, witnessing a non-trivial kernel one day. Let's go the other way. Otherwise, okay. Otherwise, we know that the normalizer, okay. 
Oh, oh, 18 is forbidden. Yes. Otherwise, Sigma is normal. Exactly. Not, not quite center. It was, uh, Sigma would be a normal subgroup. Not uh, center would be stronger, but it's at least a normal subgroup. It's uh, preserved under conjugation, setwise. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Else, otherwise, the normalizer is equal. To the subgroup. Okay, so then, uh, then this subgroup has exactly this many conjugate, distinct conjugates, conjugate subgroups, groups that are conjugate to this group. And what is this number? This number is 18 over 3, which is, um, what, 6? 6? Okay. Okay, let me, let, let's hope this works out. I'm just doing this on the fly. Okay, 6 conjugates. Okay, so now I'm gonna, I, the point of this is I'm now gonna, um, I'm not going to draw a picture that I vividly remember Professor Serganova showing me. And I just loved it. It was so cool. So I'm going to show you a trick class. It's called the flower trick. I don't know if it's called that, but it's called that in my mind. All right. The flower trick. Draw the six subgroups and try to visualize how they intersect. They're all groups of size three. Conjugate groups are isomorphic to each other. That's right. In the middle, there is the identity element. And then each group has two other elements. And since these are these are distinct groups of size 3, they don't intersect other than at the identity. The six conjugates of this subgroup. So this subgroup is, is here somewhere. Like this is sigma, this is sigma squared. One of them sigma, okay? So there you go. You got this, you get this picture of uh, inside the group, the flower. Okay, now question, question. How many elements have been accounted for in the flower? Count, now count. In this flower, we account for two times, uh, two times six, two times six. Well, plus one, 13, Whew, 13, good, yeah. Count, um, we see 13 elements accounted for. That means there are five elements remaining. Unaccounted for. Okay, so now what will I do? I'll, I'll observe the following. Um, these five elements they have to consist of a union of orbits under a union of conjugacy classes. Why? Because this, this flower is preserved by conjugation. Look, I didn't just take any 
any collection of three uh, of size three subgroups. I said start with one, take all six, including itself, take the orbit under conjugation and put that on the page. So conjugation just mixes this flower around, all the elements in the flower in some way. So the complement also just gets preserved under conjugation. So this, this five, conjugation acts on this set of five elements. Okay, but hold on. We have a group of size 18. So how on earth can, what would the orbit structure look like when you have five elements? You can do three plus two. You can do uh, two plus two plus one. Uh, you can do, um, that's it. That's it, folks. Three and two orbit sizes or two plus two plus one orbit sizes. So in each, so in any case, you get an orbit of size two. You have an action of G on a set and it has an orbit of size two. In other words, G surjects onto S2, normal subgroup. And so you're done, done again, all right? So this was the other way of doing 18 without the class equation. You can go down this rabbit hole and you can use the flower trick. You take the flower trick, you see how much the flower accounts for, focus on the, uh, the rest of the group and see if it, you can get anywhere by looking at the stuff outside the flower. So we're not really talking about elements, but rather orbits. But they're orbits of elements, Kappa. They're orbits of elements. Orbit is a bunch of elements. Oh, if you had an orbit of size 1, you, we, yeah, this is something to understand. In these five elements, we can assume there is no orbit of size 1, because that would be a non-trivial element in the center. So in fact, we can assume it's always, it's, we're in the two plus three situation. But in any case, you get an orbit of size two. And that's a problem. If you're trying to say there are no normal subgroups. Awesome, awesome, great. Okay, so class. Um, 24 is done um, easily. All right, so I'm just going to skip over 24. Class equation and divisibility, All right? Yeah, 20 is easy because um, 20, 20, is, 20 is RDL ter territory. You see, because 5 divides 20 and 5 squared is bigger than 20. So any, any element of order P generates a cyclic subgroup but that cyclic subgroup has to be normal because a conjugate of it, if it were not equal to it, would be another cyclic subgroup of size five. But then the HK trick will account for five times five elements distinct in the group. And you can't have five times five distinct elements in a group of size 20. All right, so this is RDL territory. All right, so the next one, if I remember correctly, um, similarly, 28 is gone. 28, look at, look at, you'll always get an a group of size 7, a normal subgroup of size 7. You'll always have one of those. So 28's gone. So 30 is the next one. So I'll start 30. Notice 30 doesn't have this RDL territory. So 30 is, um, is, uh, tomorrow.
All right. Actually, let me look at, let me just think about this. Wait, hold on. Yeah, I think 30 has a, 30 has an interesting, uh, the class element argument, the class equation element argument breaks down, I think. Let's just foreshadow, I don't know. I'm assume. Okay, three. Okay, so um, same reasoning. You don't, you can't have any threes in there. No twos, but you can have a five, and then a bunch of sixes, for example. And those don't produce a contradiction for us yet. So the class equation. The five, but you got to have at least one five in there because the left side's even and the right side needs to be even too. So you got to have a five in there. But look, for example, a bunch of sixes. Um, we don't know how to rule this out. We, okay, this might not even rule out. Like it might be possible that this is the case, but just because you can fill in this class equation, correctly doesn't mean that um, the group is simple doesn't mean anything it's just a possibility argument all right so the class equation doesn't give us exactly what we want so we're gonna have to do something more clever we're gonna have to do flower theory more flower theory for, for 30 we're gonna have to do flowers okay awesome that's that's next time let me look at chat. Hello, Dr. Derp. Hello, Tropical. What would you all? Um, nobody redeemed anything. That's good. But um, I'll wait till Tropical asks for the Shungite before I actually give it. What if they just run away with it without paying? Can we get a small refresher on the topic? No. Um, I teach 20, I teach 45 minute lectures. There's no, no way I do refreshers. All right. Okay, good. Yay, I'm done with lecture. So now I have to wind down. Uh, you want credits? You guys want credits? Two big credits. Loth, RDL, and another. Is it another? I forget. Who, who, who? Main, these are the maintainers. They maintain the tricks of the trade. I don't know why I didn't have this going from the beginning because group theory class is basically a bunch of amazing simple tricks placed in the right order to gain a humongous effect. Folks, you guys, you guys have to think about how beautiful group theory as a subject is. You won't see this in many of the other classes. Okay, think about how little in beginning definitions we had. Literally, all we have, like to this day, where did all of this richness come out of? Just one definition of a group. Take a look at your other subjects, folks, other classes. You won't find such a humongous ratio of like, simple initial definition versus the amount that we can know just about that mathematical structure 
Group theory is particularly beautiful for that reason. But you gotta learn the little tricks of the trade. Um, finite group theory in particular. So Sloth RDL, they maintain the tricks of the trade uh, Discord channel. That's a big thank you. And I hope you continue to polish it, maintain it, give the give tricks your own names. Okay. Um, who else was there? Kappa as usual. Kappa. Um, great student. Great fake student. All right. Who else? Tropical. Not sure what you're doing here. Okay. It's okay though. I don't need to know. I don't need to know. Gath is a... Gath maintains the peace. Maintaining the peace. I actually don't think Goring... I don't think my brother is even awake for class anymore, so he's not in the... Uh, but uh, who, who is awake? Oh, oh, he's here. Oh, he came to class today. Okay. okay let me, I gotta say that then. PPS. Good, good. He's here. Good. Woke up. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, algebraically challenged. Wait, also, they're also a mod. Keeper of the peace. Maker of jokes. Good. Adding to the good vibes. And then there's just the random. NC, do you make it? I, okay, NC always just barely makes it, folks. All right, so let's look at the credits, folks. Road to 60. We've, we've, we've conquered um, the first three trolls. 12, 18, 24. Next troll is 30. So that's what we're going, folks. Tomorrow's class, I conquer 30. And then 36. Yeah, 36 is very, very composite. Bad. Complicated. All right, folks. Today was great. Students, marvel at the use of simple tricks, group homomorphisms, sometimes left translation, sometimes conjugation. There's no like rule which one you choose when, but sometimes one is more effective than the other. Okay, great. Um, let me now go back, to, go learn about uh, geometric series and what they are. Oh, Calicot. Oh, Calicot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Some, some noob. Okay. You made it too. You made it just, just barely. It's still scrolling, you see? Oh, and, and Tommaso and uh, Robotic Daniel and Modern Meerkat. Um, you're all uh, packaged into this, um, this, this this last random person. Okay? Yeah, no problem, Kala. No problem. I'm sure you'll uh, come back with that. With that great uh, um, welcome that I gave you, I'm sure you're going to come back every time this class. Yeah. Oh, flagpole. Thank you. Okay. All right. Sparks loudly unzipping their backpack, putting away stuff. Yes, NC. I knew you were one of those. I, I, I knew. I knew you were one of those students. Favorite students. Get you, you get up and then you start zipping loud. Puff out of the classroom.
All right. Let's get out of here, folks. I got to learn what a uh, frog is, how it jumps. All that stuff. Pack up and say their last sentence outside of the teaching room. I've actually heard stories of math professors who apparently hated teaching so much that like literally they, like last minute they would just like drop the chalk and just leave no matter where they were in the lecture just garbage i don't understand that i actually don't understand that crazy is today the divergent frog it is gath it is today the divergent frog will come back with a vengeance all right gath I'm practicing for lecture. This is how I prepare for all my lectures. All right, I'm done here. I'm done here, folks. Folks, what is what is this garbage? In? <laughs> bye, bye, tropical. Garbage in, garbage out. <laughs> yes, 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 Kappa. That's right. Yeah, yeah today we're going to do that. Today we're going to do that. Ooh, it's out there. Is Professor Peter out there? I always intend to raid, but I don't know if he's out there. Is Prof Melko? All right, I'll just I'll just do a hard I'll just do a hard hard uh, hard stop. Yeah, oh my god, my wife is calling me. I need to fix the sink again. And she took my keys. That's right. Tropical. There you go. Wait, how do you know? Okay, I don't even Okay, I don't even want to ask. 